uh, we got to talk about being on Apple Plus. So how does, uh, this is crazy to me to have people on television playing you and your family. So how does it come that, that Home Before Dark comes about? Oh, um, I don't even, I wasn't even super involved like with like, cause there's my agent, right? And I think, I think, so my agent wanted to sell, was like selling the rights for my story basically. And I didn't really, I, I mean, like my parents tell me these things, but I'm like, yeah, 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 whatever. I'm going to, I'm going to like go on a walk. Like I'm going to ride my bike, you know, like I kind of tuned out a lot of it. And then I remember, um, I was on the phone. I got to be on the phone with Joy Gorman the producer and my parents and I that day I had a theater performance and I did not like I wasn't super aware of the situation or what was like going on at first I was just really concerned that I was going to be like late to this dress rehearsal because it was tech week um just like you know like the week leading up to the performance where it's like really intense rehearsals anyway but I was like that was the concern going on in my head this like community theater thing so I was on the call and that was when I was like first kind of like soaking in um, that that was like happening. And I didn't really realize what um, a big deal it would be at the time. You know, I, again, I was very concerned with get, getting to my performance on time. Like that was my main, that was my main priority. Um, and then uh, with the show, the writers would meet with me um, like in the writing process and they would meet with me and my dad and I think my mom sometimes and they would just like talk to me and my dad about our life and everything and it, it was a lot of fun it was really cool they flew us out when we were filming when they were filming to Vancouver and we got to see like them them filming everything and I think that I think that really inspired my love of filmmaking but it was so cool to see all the behind the scenes stuff and they were building like they built an entire house basically for like my like for um like my my alter ego's house I don't know how to describe it you know like fake me on the screen her she had this entire fake house and you got to walk in it and it was so cool so you're walking around like this isn't my house at all you guys see <laughs> <laughs> So uh, okay, so that can, when when does it when does it go from it's talking I'm talking to some writers to oh this is definitely going to be a show people are going to see this and they're going to think this fake me is me. To be completely honest, I didn't even I didn't like get it really until or maybe I was just like delaying it, <laughs> but I didn't get it until we went on the set and I saw like they also built this school, they built this entire school for fake me and my fake friends and my fake sister, which was so weird to me. And it was absolutely strange. It was such a strange experience and it doesn't get any less weird. It didn't get less weird with season two. It's weird. Um, also for me specifically, my name isn't a very common one. I'd never hear people say my name in general. So to watch a show where people are like saying my name, it's very strange. It's a very off-putting experience, <laughs> but a great one. Well, in all fairness, it was, was it Hildy Lysako? Like, how do they say it? Lisco. It was Hildy Lisco. <laughs> just so, I mean, it's a totally different person. <laughs> 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 which, which it kind of is, right? Because I know the, the first episode doesn't even, the first episode that, that I enjoyed didn't even really match up with your story one for one. There's enough of the original DNA there, but as they go on, I know there's talk of a season three. Has that been officially announced yet? No, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what I can say, but season three is not, um, not happening. I'm, you know, if there's a chance, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I can say this, but if it isn't, then I'll, I'll email you. But I think I can say this season three, not happening. Um, but I think like, you know, the plot wasn't super uh, obviously realistic to my life, but I think one thing they really nailed was my personality and kind of my family dynamics. My mom was so spot on to how my mom is in real life. Even the actress who played my mom, Abby, so much like my mom, it's crazy. Uh, my dad wasn't like super, um, they made him like kind of like deep and interesting. And I mean, my dad's interesting, but he's not like, I don't know, super sad all the time. Like my dad is in the show. <laughs> um, but they really nailed the family dynamics. Uh, they, re they really nailed my sister, Izzy. Oh my gosh, she's exactly like that in real life. Um, but yeah. 
Do people now come up to your dad on the street and just hug him? Like, it's going to be okay. You're going to be all right. <laughs> <I'm> okay. <laughs> My dad in the show knew how to play guitar. My dad doesn't know how to play guitar, which I'm very upset about. I wish my real life dad knew how to play guitar. <laughs> You're watching fake you listening to fake dad play guitar. Like, That's how good. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what a swap out with fake me. That's uh... <laughs> and I know you interviewed, what's the actress's name who plays you, Bridget? Somebody? Um, Brooklyn Prince. Brooklyn yeah i know you interviewed her but did she did she meet with you did you guys talk about who you are as a character how'd that go yeah we're actually super close right now she's like my she's like a little sister to me i love her so much she's like so talented and i mean everyone knows she's an amazing actress but she's also like such a good writer she's like a superhero but um yeah so we met back, back to your original question um i remember the first time we met I think it was at the Plaza in New York, if I remember correctly. It was at some hotel. And she was just, like, so sweet. She ran up to me, and, like, we hugged. And it was, like, this dramatic movie moment. Um, we spent a lot of time together. Uh, we hung out a lot. She, like, in 20, I mean, maybe this was 2020. She came to Arizona, and we went to Tombstone together. And we went on this ghost tour um, <laughs> together, which was, like, so fun. Um, but hopefully we can meet up again soon. Well, hopefully, I'm, I'm sure Brooklyn is listening to us. I'm like, yes, talk more about how I'm a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> she really is, though. It's crazy. She is an amazing actress. I really enjoyed uh, her, her performance. Um, uh, having just now met you for the first time, it's spot on. It's <laughs> obviously. Um, but with that happening, I, I, I'm just curious, and I don't know if there is a, a way to answer this question, but I wonder how does that change you, having a fake a fake family on television that the whole world uh, is watching? I'm assuming people you know in real life and are interacting with at school and elsewhere have watched the show and have questions for you about, hey, did this happen? How much of this is like you? Um, so, okay, with this, I'll answer the school question first. So I went to a school, right now I go to high school in Nogales, which is like 20 minute, 20 minute drive from my house. And I love it there. It's super great. Lots of people there. Um, the school I went to at the time when the show came out, there were 11 people in my grade. So I was not going to, of course, I'm not, I mean, I, it's awkward. It's like the whole, my whole situation, it's awkward to bring up because you bring it up and it's like, it sounds like the most pretentious fake thing ever like I just it's it's awkward for me to bring up I don't like bringing any of that stuff up um however somebody who I knew before who was in my class um like told everyone like my whole situation <laughs> and I'm just like I mean look I, I actually don't care now like, look, looking back it's not like a big deal to me or anything but I was mortified at the time I was so upset I was, cause I just didn't, I don't know. It's an awkward, of course, in a class where it's just 11 people in my entire grade. And I was in seventh grade at the time, which is like when people are the, you know, like, I don't know if you've met a seventh grader, but they're the worst people to ever exist. <laughs> <laughs> Middle school girls, no joke. Um, and I remember when the trailer came out, like everybody was watching it in my class. And I just like, stood there awkwardly I it's it's a it's kind of it's just such like an awkward situation I think I like asked to go to the bathroom I was like walked around like the campus <laughs> oh my that I mean you might have be like maybe one of three people in all of history that maybe have had that experience right I don't know how I don't know what the number is but it can't be that high yeah um I still don't like I mean I have my close friends at my school who know this stuff but I don't, like, people don't, like, unless, like, I, I'm, like, close with somebody, people don't know anything about my newspaper or anything that happened to me. At least, I, I just like how I try to keep it, you know? So if they don't know, you don't tell them? Yeah. You don't have a shirt that has your Hillary Clinton blurb on it? <laughs> <laughs> Should? I don't. I should, just wear it at home. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just look in the mirror and feel really good about myself. <laughs> 
<laughs> Hillary Clinton never says anything about me other than, like, I wish that Rob Campfellow would stop talking so much. I'm getting it on a shirt and I'm wearing it every episode. <laughs> you should have a shirt that's like, Hillary Clinton has never interacted with me. It's like, wear it around and then people will get like really suspicious about it. <laughs> <laughs>